lot to talk to the founder of BKFC, David Feldman, about. He's kind enough to join us. There he is. David Feldman is here with us in a different spot this time. Where is this, David? Uh, this is the uh, the podcast studio. Okay. I don't know. You have a podcast yourself? Uh, yeah, we have a podcast. They, uh, it's called the Bare Knuckle Podcast. Brian Socha, our, uh, our hype man, he leads it. He's doing a good job at it, but we're going to really start pushing it in the next couple of weeks, really try to grow this thing. All right. Well, um, that, that is essentially what you're doing with the organization as well, growing it. Congrats on all the recent success. Uh, congrats Thank on you. Knuckle Mania, the Mohegan Show. Connor, uh, I do want to ask you first about Knuckle Mania because that happened just a few weeks ago, and that's where you announced the Connor News. Were you happy with it? That's sort of your WrestleMania, your Super Bowl, right, your International Fight Week event, your, your big tentpole event uh, for the year. Were you happy with the event overall, also your debut in Los Angeles? Yeah, I mean, I was happy with the event overall. I was happy with the reception. I was happy that there wasn't an empty seat in the place. I was happy that the crowd was really into it. Some of the fights didn't end up the way I wanted them to end up. Um, you know, unfortunate injury and just things always don't happen as you plan them to happen. But all in all, I would grade it like a uh, a B plus or so for our debut in Los Angeles. We're uh, we're going back to California in July. We're going to do a big show there in November. Um, so we love being in, in California. The commission was great to work with. The fans were insane. So yeah, absolutely. It was, it was an awesome experience. Which cities in California are you going to in July and November? Um, we're going to go to uh, Temecula in yep. July. Okay. And then we're going to go up north. Um, didn't pick it out exactly yet. We have three different places that we're looking at. But Sacramento is one of them, and um, we could end up there. Okay. Uh, I was just going to ask you about Andy Foster and the California State Athletic Commission and your experience with them. I, I consider them the gold standard as far as commissions are concerned. Uh, what was it like with, with, with them as far as your experience? Yeah, I mean, look, it took us four years to get it over the edge with him. He wasn't a big fan at the beginning. I think just the fact that we were doing everything right and we had the right uh, medical data and we did everything that we were supposed to do and actually exceeded a lot of expectations. And I think that that's why he said, look, let me give this thing a shot. He did. It was great to work with. I mean, really, really great to work with. His old commission was. And, you know, it, it was a pleasure working with them. Really, honestly, not brown nosing him, just being straight up honest with him. I mean, it was a really, really great experience working with the California Commission. I think you just alluded to this, but in the post-fight press conference, I think you gave out the first ever Quitter of the Night Award. To Chris Sorrow, uh, what happened there, and and what made you feel like that was the appropriate thing to do? Yeah, you know, looking at it in hindsight, I said a couple things with that that I shouldn't have said. But look, you're paying these guys to fight, and if they don't get really even get hit, and they're they lay down, and they get an opportunity to get up, and they don't get up, and you know they choose to to not continue and get paid. I mean, look, if you're if I know this is different. But I'm going to use this analogy. If you're cutting someone's lawn and you start the lawnmower up and walk away and don't cut their lawn, do you get paid? No. Mm. So you walk in the ring, you don't get hit, really. You don't throw a punch, really. And you take a knee and the referee waves it off. I mean, I was upset. I'm very passionate about this. And was it the right decision? I don't know. But I was so passionate about it. And, you know, a lot. I, I asked a few people about it first that, if I if they didn't think it was the right thing to do, they would have told me no. And they said no, absolutely. So I did it. Another big win for Mike Perry. And and now I'm wondering, is it just going to be hard to find him a, opponents because he's just so damn good? He was on the show last week, and, and he said right before he came on, you texted him that there are some big things in the works. He was hinting at some stuff. What could you tell us about Mike Perry's next assignment? Uh, can you can you reveal this to us? Really, I can just tell you that I'm that I'm making a move next week and going down and visiting two. Uh, big name fighters for him that I think are really, really going to blow this thing up, um, and I, and I think we're really close to getting the, getting this done. The, the thing is, is, look, I can put him in with the championship, and I want to, and if he wants to, I'm going to do that because I think we owe it to our champion and Mike Perry to do it. But at the end of the day, is I think you alluded to this when he was on. Um, people, I have to give him someone that people care about. Right, that people really invested in to really watch this thing now because he is, you know, kind of a superstar in combat sports now. So I have to give him someone that people are going to talk about. And I have two or three names that people are certainly going to talk about. Can you give us I, those names? I can, tell you, I can tell you they're legends in the UFC. Legends. Legends. And, and are they t- tied up with the UFC now or are they free? No, they're free. 
he was alluding to an MMA fight. Um, would that be with you or in conjunction with you guys? What was he talking about? We'll probably be associated with it if it happens. You know, who knows if it happens. But I think in this one that we talked about, it does make sense if it happens. So if it happens, good, and and we'll help out with the promotion, and then I'll come back over. But um, I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Um, the guy that he's going to fight doesn't, you know, sometimes he signs a contract and shows up, and sometimes he doesn't. So we'll see. Are you referring to Dylan Dennis? Um, I think um, it could be Dylan Dennis. Yeah. Well, they've been going back and forth a lot. Is there any chance that you would explore Dylan in, in bare knuckle against Mike Perry? I, I mean, I would, but, you know, his his performance against Logan Paul wasn't great, obviously, right? And I, I, I think there's a lot of hype behind it, so I would like to see if he really went out there and, you know, he, he's good friends with Conor McGregor now, so... I mean, he's been good friends with Conor McGregor, so maybe that's something that makes sense. But I don't know if the fans want to see it because I don't think they're confident that he's going to go in there and bang it out with him, right? In MMA, it's different. He's one of the best jiu-jitsu guys in the world. So if he, you know, MMA makes a lot more sense for him. But if he's willing to take the gloves off and stand up and throw it down, we can definitely have a conversation about that, which we did. We did have conversations about that. It just didn't go anywhere. Okay. And realistically, because Mike's fight was so short, when could we see him back? Um, I, I want to bring him back in, I mean, depending on what he does with this possible MMA yeah. fight, but I want to bring him back in September. Okay. Now, speaking of Conor McGregor, at Knucklemania, you have the big announcement where uh, Conor is is revealed to be a uh, a, a new owner, um, part of the ownership team of BKFC. And then uh, last week, we saw the video of both of you at the Black Forge Inn uh, signing the papers. First things first, did you have the steak on the stone at the Black Fortune? It's an incredible dish. Did you I try did, it? Right? It was actually, a, there was a special that night. It was the it was a Wagyu strip on the, on the stone oh. and it, it, was, it was sensational. Isn't man. it great? <laughs> yeah. It was awesome, man. It was awesome. The one time I was there, I asked him what he recommended and, uh, that's what he recommended. And, and I was, I was seriously blown away by how good it was. Um, but let's let's start with the the Connor conversation. How did this all start? Like, wh- what are the embryonic stages of you and Connor talking about this? I think it started when he came to the to the first fight about a year ago, um, when uh, Mike Perry fought uh, Luke Rockhold and Eddie Alvarez fought Chad Mendez, and he made an you know he made a pretty cool appearance there. And I think he kind of started to really fall in love with the sport itself. And then we got into uh, business with his his stout for Zyra Stout that became a sponsor of BKFC. And we just started having having conversations, and um, you know, one thing led to another, and here we are. He's uh he is a partner at BKFC, and and we're we couldn't be any more excited about it. It's it's, it's really, it's going to be an unbelievable partnership. So, could you tell us about the the terms of the deal? That that has been somewhat ambiguous at this point. Like, what what percentage of the company does he own? Yeah, you know, he's actually we we, we talked a little bit today, and just so you know, he's going to be on your show soon, and whether oh. you whether you. Do, or not. So he's going to, I'm going to let him disclose what he wants to disclose about that. I'm going to tell you that he has needle moving equity. He has, he has very, he has substantial equity in, in the company. He has enough equity to really make a big play here. And, um, you know, I think he's going to. Okay. And so as far as like the ownership team of BKFC, is it still you, Triller and him? Is that it? Or is it, but, but... Uh, there's a couple other investors in there, but it's, it's, it's Triller, which is um which which just completed a merger actually and yeah they should be hitting the public listing in the next four weeks or so um with a company out of uh out of Taiwan so that's going to be very very interesting to see where that thing goes since they announced a possible merger it I think the stock seven x so far so it's uh it's it's a big move and uh yeah he's 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 going to have say he's going to have you know opinions and say and you know ideas and. We look forward to it all. Will Will he help as far as promotion goes as well? Like I can't imagine the the you know him standing. I know that's that's your role as well. But like you can have Connor at the events or at the dais at the press conference, hyping up fighters. That that that's priceless, right? Like you can't put a price tag on that. So look, will you have look, him do Aaron, that? I, blood, sweat, and tears, man. Like you don't know what I had to do to get this thing to this point. And I love talking about the company, and I love being the guy there. I love it, but they don't want to see me if they had the choice between me or Conor McGregor. So right. Conor McGregor all day long, the, the, the ones he can make that appearance to absolutely would love him to do it. He's going to, I mean, he loves it. He just loves the sport because it's, it's as real as it gets. And, you know, I did, didn't spend a lot of time with him, but he's, he's very real too. I don't know how much time you've talked to him in the past, 
but he's a real dude, man. He didn't forget his roots. He didn't forget where he came from. And uh, I, I enjoyed the little bit of time that we spent together, and I got to know him pretty well. And I, uh, I really like him as a person. I think he's a good guy. Did you have to talk to the UFC about him coming on board? How did that work? I didn't, but I, I, I know that he obviously had conversations with him. Okay. Um, and by the way, uh, there are only two fights left on his deal. Is there any chance once those two fights are done that he comes over? He seems to have a great affinity for the sport, speaking about it quite a bit. with like You could tell how much he loves it. Has he mentioned this to you, that he'd like, before it's all said and done for him in fighting, to try it out at least once? I mean, I tell you what he what, what he says all the time. He loves the UFC. He loves Dana White. He loves the company. He loves fighting for them. And he loves what we do, too. So, look, he's got two more fights in the contract. We'll, we'll see what happens there. I mean, he loves the UFC, so I can't – I don't know. I can't, I, I can't tell you that. I can tell you who if, – if I was sitting here and said, nah, we don't want him to fight for us. Come on. What kind of a liar would I sure, be? Sure, right? sure, sure. Of course we want him to fight for us. But, you know, I'm not getting in the middle of, of what they're – their agreement and their deal is right now. But if that opportunity does arise, 100%, 100%. And I think he would like it, but, you know, I'll let him speak for himself. Sure, sure. And and of course, I knew that you would feel that way. I was just wondering if he had expressed to you that one day he would like to try it. I mean, he says he loves the sport. Like, yeah. I mean, he said it publicly. I, I have to try this. I have to do this. I have to do this. But, you know, look, business is business. He has a great business relationship with the UFC. And, you know, look, they're just getting bigger and bigger, so... Who knows? Do you have moments where, you know, you you, uh, you talked to us recently about some of, uh, you know, the dark days, right? But here you are now, you're on fire. The 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 company and, and, and the sport is being sanctioned all over the, uh, the United States and the world. Conor McGregor wants to be involved. You have him now part of the team. Do you, do you allow yourself to have moments to say like, holy crap, it's really all coming together for us? Do you, do you give yourself that? Yeah, you know, I, I did recently. Um, there's been a lot of, you know, a lot, like you said, a lot of dark days, a lot of great days. But, I mean, I absolutely did. Like, I stood outside. This this guy that helped mentor me he says, look, he said, Dave, man, you got to step out of the jar once in a while and read the label. Because when you read the label, you're going to see all the shit you're accomplishing. And I did. And I was like, man, holy shit, man. This is crazy. Like, when I tell you we had to do beg, borrow we didn't steal, but we begged and borrowed and did anything we had to do and risked everything to get it here. And like I said, I always say, like, we're not we're not the number one combat sport promotion in the world. We're not the number two, but we're, we're, we're rising. We're growing globally. We're growing all over the place. Why? Because it's so relatable. People get it. They understand what it is. And shit. No, I still got you. OK, I don't. I don't have you. So anyway, if you see me, that's good. I anyway, see. Um, good. So, um, yeah, man, I, 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 I do. I recently did. I was like, holy shit, really? Like we're doing all this. I just met Dana White. I had a great conversation with him. I am getting sanctioned in all these states where I, I know I've been talking about this TV deal for a while, but it looks like we actually got an offer on. on oh, there it is. Look like something. Looking back. What happened? Was it his... Uh... Like the quality got lower and lower and then he got disconnected. Yes. So... What do we got here? Interesting. Um, mm, 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 mm. It's, it's a remarkable thing and I'll, I'll be the first to say that uh, I was uh, skeptical and critical. It's interesting that he had that poster there, the Artem Lobov poster. Actually, that was that's Artem Lobov, Jason Knight. Arnold Lobov, Polly Malignaggi was their first big one. You know, we had, I think it was after the Jason Knight fight. It might have been the Polly fight. We had uh, Artem on the show, the ESPN show, and he was completely busted up. Like his eyes were all messed up. His face was messed up. And uh, I was actually told after that show that I wasn't allowed to have any uh, BK fighters on the show because it was just too gruesome. Now, there's a part of me that always kind of felt like there was more to that. But that was uh, disappointing. That was disappointing. Uh, among the many restrictions that were put on uh, the program back then. Because it felt like they were growing. And I was curious about it. I was uh, intrigued. Hey, he's back. Um, so we go back to Dave. There he is. Hello, Dave. Sorry, Matt. No, no problem. No problem. Yes, yeah, so you were just saying uh, you read the label now and you allow yourself to, uh, to at hey, least I mean, draw look, it. Man, I mean, we're in the middle. I don't know if you caught this, but uh, uh, we got two offers last last week from two different television platforms. Oh wow! And um, 
we're going to be making our decision in the next two weeks on which direction we're going. And so things have been just going really, really well for us. You know, I think we treat most people right. Almost all the people we treat very, very good. Um, we give them opportunities and we love our fans. We love our fighters. And I think we're getting they're They're reading off of what we're doing and they're reading off, off of our passion and they're supporting us. And, you know, we're growing and it's amazing. Um, these deals that you're talking about, would that mean that we would get BKFC deals on, you know, either cable or streaming that wouldn't require pay-per-view? Because I do feel like that's the next step for you guys, right? Not to always be behind a paywall. Yeah, look, we, we experiment sometimes with um, one of our partners, Fubo, and with also our YouTube, and we do free events here and there. And when we do them, we're always in the seven digits every single time of, of viewership. And I mean, that's amazing for combat sports. That's a yeah. really good number. Or, you know, not even marquee shows. So, yes, absolutely. That's exactly where we're headed. And I think that, you know, that's what really evolutes this whole entire thing. When do you think that will be announced or finalized? Uh, probably in the next four to six weeks. Okay. Uh, big, big but, names? You know what? I can't do that right now, only because <laughs> I'm, I'm negotiating area. Okay, I'm fair the, enough. I'm, I'm in the I got it. I got it. Well, uh, that is exciting stuff. And I look forward to it. Also, at the post fight press conference, this past weekend, you mentioned that there was some big news coming. What could you tell us about that? I just have um, some of the kind of deal that we did with um, with with Connor. We're doing with a couple other marquee athletes um, that are coming in. Some some big name brands are coming in, um, and the big news was really part of that um, part of that TV deal that we're going to be announcing soon. And uh, the fighters that are hitting us up, it's it, it's unbelievable. It really is like <laughs> it's crazy notes and. We're getting the funding together. Um, so once all this stuff really comes together, we're going to be able to really sign and do anything we really want to do. And once we can do that, I think we explode. Uh, your first show in the Northeast, uh, first show at the Mohegan Sun, what was it like? It was great, man. Over 5,000 people there. Um, really good fights. Main event could have been a little more competitive. Daniel Strauss even told me, he said, look, I had trouble making weight. I couldn't, I just couldn't let my, uh, you know, let my shots go as much, but all in all, some great fights on the card. The fans loved it. Mohegan Sun loved it. So, we'll, you know, we're looking to be back there in late fall. And and what about Philly? You've promised, uh, or you've talked about Philly. That's your that's your neck of the woods. So, we're we're talking right now. We're just trying to figure out how you get it over the over the line, whether it has to go through a legislative change or not. And we're talking with the commission on that. They're very supportive of it right now. Um, we're going to have a call this week, so I'm hoping to get one of them in this year too. That would be unbelievable. But it's it's coming, it's it's coming, and another big state, another huge state for us is coming as well. I can't. I know you're going to say which one. I'm going to tell you. I can't tell you. So I'll just tell you now. I can't tell you which one, but I'll tell you it's it, it's probably the most important state that that we've got, and that's coming. And um, is it Nevada? There, Ari. Is it Nevada? It. <laughs> I didn't ask which one. I just asked a specific one. Um, but no, I understand. I, I mean, it feels like you get Nevada, you get New York, and now you're, I mean, there's there's no stopping you. I know you're going to Mexico later on this month. At the end of this year, 2024, how many events do you think you'll put on? I think we will put on 42. And I know you said that we're doing too many shows and half of me agrees with you and the other half doesn't. And the half that agrees with me goes... Yeah, we are we we are oversaturating it. We are putting on. We're giving the fans too much to watch sometimes. The other half of me says that what you don't understand is we're not just building another MMA promotion. If we were doing that, we wouldn't have to do all these shows. We're building a whole sport. So, mean, meaning we have to develop our fighters, and the only way to develop them is by having them fight. And then we find some diamonds in the rough, and then we can move into the bigger shows. So, the thing about what we do is we have two or three what we call like ten pole uh, events a year. And then we have our numbered events and the numbered events are the ones that the people want to fight on the numbered and the big events. Right. And uh, the other ones are fight night and prospect events. And they're, those are the ones that we're getting the up and coming guys to see if they have what it takes to, to become BKFC fighters. And so I get what you're saying, but on, you know, from growing this company, there's no other way to do it except for having them fight. Do you have a dream fight? Like a fight that you would love to make one day that you think about that you're obsessed with? Um, I actually did, and it was it was Francis Ngannou versus Tyson Fury with with no gloves on. Wow. That was the one I wanted before. I mean, you know, Conor McGregor 
really versus anybody. But Conor McGregor versus Mike Perry, I think the whole entire world would want, would want to see that in bare knuckle. All right, that 100%. would be huge. Conor that Nate, would be huge. So, yeah, man. I mean, I think that people want to see that too. And you know, if Conor does choose to fight bare knuckle, I don't think that that's that. I I think that's a good possibility. Sure. I mean, Nate was at our. Fight. California. I don't know if you know he was at our fight, but he was at our fight, and we had a great conversation, man. He's it's crazy because I talk about perception of bare knuckle all the time, and people they are talking about, oh, it's this, it's that, and they didn't watch it yet, right? Right. Like with Nate, if you don't know him, you're probably like, man, this is a real street guy. You're like, and then you talk to him, and you're like, man, what a sweet dude, man. Yeah. What a nice guy he is. Like a really good dude, man. So I had a great conversation with him, and you know we're going to continue having some talks too, but you know. That's where we are. Man, on fire. Did you hear our debate last week, um, BKFC, PFL? Did you hear this debate that we had? Yeah, I mean, I got like 100 text messages and people were like, how much do you pay Ariel for that? <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Like, Anytime, because just... they say that I, when I give PFL props, they're like, oh, you're on the PFL payroll. And then I say this and they're like, you're like, I, I'm just giving my opinion. I'm not getting paid by anyone. It is crazy that that's the, the, the first I, thing. Because because I've been critical of you, right? I've been critical of your organization. We, we, yeah. We, I, I just try to speak from the heart. And so I was just wondering what you thought of what we had to say. I mean, I imagine you, you were happy with it, but uh, overall, what did you think about what we had to say? Well, I think you're kind of spot on on what you're saying, because I think that our trajectory is, does have a chance of being a lot bigger than anything else out there because we are different. Had we be another, had we been another MMA company, then, you know, maybe we wouldn't have that trajectory, but because we're different, I think that what you guys said was really spot on. And again, great conversations all the time with Don Davis have no problems with the PFL at all, but I just see us having a different product and does have the opportunity to grow bigger really than anything else out there, except for the UFC. And I think that, um, you know, I'm investing in it. So why wouldn't you? Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Well said. Uh, the one thing that they do have in their corner that you guys don't have right now, I think, is the big TV deal, right? You would you would agree on that. You're, that's why you're talking to these people and and some of the more uh, blue chip sponsors. Do you, do you think those are going to come as well for you guys? They're coming right now. We're in talks with them all right now. Okay. I mean, we really are in talks with a lot of different. And then the Conor McGregor news, you know, got it got announced, and a lot of them reached back out to us. So it was a. Uh, it was a needle mover for us, and yes, absolutely, the the bigger blue chip sponsors are coming on board. But I mean, no organization would have the big blue chip sponsors without a TV deal, right? right. Yeah, the, the TV deal. It's it's just the order of the way things go. So we locked that TV deal in here shortly, and and they're all going to come because we broke the perception of you know everybody's getting getting hurt really really bad in this thing, and every and it's not going to last, right? Like you know, again, and and not dogging you on you but you were one of them that said it's not gonna last it is right and that, a lot of our media did but here we are six years later it's not only lasting it's growing all over the world and the tv deal and then blue chip sponsors and then really it, it is it's kind of game over then because then we could just concentrate on putting the biggest and best product that we can put together on you know once i mean this, it's been a struggle man and i don't want to just keep beating the beating on the same drum no i get but it to get funding to do these events not been easy because you have to have the vision with it and we luckily we have some great partners trillers one of them that has the vision to where we can be and you know everything's starting to come together right now and and the whole team couldn't be any happier because look they're overworked and underpaid and soon they're going to be probably still overworked but overpaid <laughs> By the way, you you will probably remember better than I, but uh, did I say it wasn't gonna? I know I've said that you know it wasn't my thing; it was too gruesome. But did I actually say it wasn't gonna last? Yeah, you you said that. Um, I think what, what exactly what you said. It, I can't I can't think of exactly what you said. I, I know it was something like it's a flash in the pan. I think you said. Did I say that? In in any event, yeah. I, I mean, I'm mad enough to say that I was wrong. I, I was wrong. I've said this now a hundred times. I was wrong. I enjoy the product and I think what you're doing is really, really interesting um, and fun and different. And that's why we had that discussion last week. One last thing. Uh, I heard some people say, oh, Connor's involved maybe an event in Ireland. And there's obviously like a great history of bare knuckle fighting over there. Is there any chance of that? A hundred percent. We're talking about it right now. So we're talking to, we're talking to um, the regulatory bodies over there, talking to the arenas. We're, we're trying to line something up this year. 100% in Ireland. Absolutely. I mean, 
the heritage is from Ireland. We have to do Ireland. So yeah. especially with him and Bob. Hey, one thing I wanted to say, man, I was over to O'Connor. And let me tell you, man, like there were people coming up trying to take pictures of him crying. Like, my God, like it yeah. was the most, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. He is such an icon there and he loves, he loves what he does. And the only thing I'll say about his fight with the UFC is, man, this guy is focused and training really hard. Yeah. He looks to be in great shape, $20 million yep. gate. Um, and, and it seems like his interest in your brand and your company is very, very genuine. And uh, he seems all in and very passionate about it. So that's a big coup for you and, and uh, cool to see from him. And I can't wait to see where this partnership goes. Uh, congratulations on that. Congrats on Knuckle Mania, on Mohegan Sun, on Mexico coming up and everything you guys are doing. It's a lot of fun to see you guys grow and, awesome. uh, and, and disrupt the whole industry. So well done. And thank you as always for the time, David. Thank you. I appreciate it, Ariel. Thank you. All right. There he is, the founder of BKFC, Mr. David Feldman. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.